What's up guys, Secretoon back with another video and in this video we're going to be talking about getting into the Apple ecosystem for under 500 American dollars. For this video I'll only be using an iPhone and a MacBook because that is what I presume most people would use. Most people wouldn't really need an Apple Watch but of course it depends on use cases and you can pay a bit more into this ecosystem to get an Apple Watch. So let's talk about the MacBook first. I went for the MacBook Pro 2012 because of course I already have one of those and don't have enough money to buy another machine but this would be my first preference anyway if I was joining the ecosystem for a, a tight budget because it has good specs and while it might be a bit thicker than the MacBook Airs that would probably be the other option they have more upgradability and it would just be a better choice. So for about 380 Australian dollars, you can buy a MacBook Pro 2012 with the i5 and four gigabytes of RAM. Now, of course, you can add in extra RAM to make it eight gigabytes. And of course, they all come with 500 gig hard drives. So you'll have to upgrade it to 128 gig SSD. But once you've done that, it'll bring you right on budget and it is the machine that is basically what I'm using, except I'm using the one with the i7. But they're not much difference unless you're doing like video rendering and stuff like that so there won't really be much difference in the comparison here. So my experience with this machine was actually pretty good. Over the few years I've had it, it's been very good. It doesn't hiccup, it barely ever like freezes or something like that very occasionally and it runs programs very smoothly. The only little complaints I have are that the display has pretty thick bezels but they don't bother me as much as the pixel density which is pretty low on this machine but it's still not that noticeable and if you don't really care then it won't really bother you. The machine also runs a bit hot. Those are my only complaints. The good things about this machine really outdo the bad things. Some of the good things are it still runs the latest operating system and it has a very premium build quality with a great keyboard and a great trackpad. The keyboard has lots of travel and it's a very good keyboard. Now of course the latest keyboards from Apple are probably a little bit better but it just depends on what style you prefer. This keyboard still is great in 2020 and it's great on this machine and the trackpad is also really good. It's got that glass surface and it's very smooth and probably the best trackpad on a machine. And of course this machine also supports macOS Catalina which is the latest version and is still getting patch updates and stuff like that. But I don't think it'll get the next major update from Apple. And the phone I bought was an iPhone 7. A lot of people would have said go for the iPhone 8 but in my opinion it isn't a great idea because they still go for quite a lot of money because Apple still sells them on their website brand new so people still want to try and sell them for maximum they can. While with the iPhone 7 it's just one generation behind the iPhone 8 and has very similar features and specs but it is a lot cheaper at least half the price sometimes and my one was $200 and that's the price we'll be using for this video because you can quite easily find them for $200 if you do search around. So my experience with the phone has been really good. It's very fast and never hiccups as well just like the MacBook. It runs very seamlessly on iOS 13 and I haven't had any problems there. No bugs comparing to Android. That's, that's the advantages of having an iOS system. Apple optimizes each of their devices specifically to, so they don't have any bugs. And yeah, it's been very smooth and I haven't had any problems here. Some of the complaints I have with this machine are that the battery isn't the greatest. So you'll have to charge it up about midway through the day if you are a heavier user. But the standby time of the battery is really good. I could leave it overnight and the next morning I would have lost about 15 to 20%, which is pretty good. And if you put it in airplane mode, which is what I do, you can lose about 10 to 12%, which is quite good. Some other things I've really enjoyed with the iPhone as I've been using it, it's the speakers. The speakers are fantastic. They're stereo on both sides. They're very clear. And comparing to the Google Pixel and any other phone I've used, they just smash it. They have very clear sound. They even have actual bass in them. Um, it's not very great, but it still has a bit of bass and use the earphone speaker and the bottom speaker to get stereo sound. So when you do block one of those speakers, you'll still get sound from the other one. So you don't have to worry about holding the phone in a specific way. I've also enjoyed using the non plus variant, which is what I got because it fits very well in my hand and is very easy for one-handed use. 
and even though it's the same size as a Google Pixel, which is the phone I used to have, since this phone is thinner, it feels much more comfortable in the hand. I also enjoyed the premium build quality of this phone and the camera were also pretty good as well, although the camera's low light video isn't that great. So these are the machines I'd recommend if you were going into the Apple's ecosystem because they both work very fluently and they work together great because you've got airdrop, handoff and all the Apple ecosystem features. So that they're, they're great products and I definitely recommend these if you were going to invest into the Apple ecosystem. So that's it from me guys. Hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, smash the like button. If you didn't, smash the dislike button. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.